Dear colleagues, let me invite you to a whistle-stop tour of bridging the social and wireless networking divide. Of course, a picture says much more about the subject area than a thousand words, and in this slide you could see the main applications of uh, social media and the main applications of wireless social networking, uh, which of course have been explored almost for a century. If I look back in history, the first story in social network analysis goes back to 1934. Uh, but of course, before the introduction of computer-based techniques, the developments were extremely slow. Uh, however, today, social networking is really driving the uh, networking, the uh, network traffic, the tele-traffic, and so it is extremely important to, to support these services as efficiently as possible. So in this illustration, uh, we have three social groups uh, which are constituted by people who have common interest in some kind of uh, source information. These could be MP3 files or jazz concerts or jam, jam sessions, or could be, again, the election of the new Pope, where people close up can select uh, better pictures than those who are at the back, or in fact could be envisaged uh, a scenario at the Olympic Games uh, in London, where people want to watch uh, somebody scoring a goal whilst being in a different stadium. So this is really just the motivation of our research. And as I already mentioned, much of the tele-traffic is really driven by social media. Whether we call this device-to-device -device communications or personal communications, the terminology is not so important. This treatise looks at a gradually ramped up study of a range of design problems uh, that range social networking and wireless networking. And so in this slide, uh, what we are witnessing is how, for example, mobile social networks can be used for improving the connectivity of cellular networks, where the base station has a limited range, as seen in the picture. And when some mobile stations enter its uh, coverage area, then they can pick up delayed tolerant messages and then as they encounter other mobiles during uh, their travel, uh, they are able to uh, pass on the information of common interest. On the right hand side, it's quite clear that the base station is no longer transmitting, uh, but the mobiles are exchanging information as indicated by the red, no, rather the green arrows. So perhaps uh, I would like to also uh, invite you to a little demo, which you can play, of course, at your own leisure. Uh, having introduced uh, this scenario, let me take you through the different color schemes, first of all. So the red dots indicate the users uh, who are uh, hitherto unserved, uh, whereas the blue dots indicate the silenced information owners whereas the green dots represent the active information owners. There's also the, the light uh, magenta colored dot, which indicates those answered users who eventually get into the coverage area of the base station as seen in the center right now. And the dot turned uh, dark blue because this mobile succeeded in downloading a file as you see down at the bottom, of 40 megabytes. Uh, the bit rates here in this scenario are 1 megabps or 2 megabps. And so in theory, that implies that the download takes uh, 40 seconds. Now you could observe perhaps, again, another mobile here in the center received the desired information. And uh, there are Hither to answer mobile users, which have to get into the vicinity of this mobile in order to be able to download the file. So let's see whether this will happen here. There's a good chance. Indeed, there was a, a brief encounter, as you could see, but it wasn't long enough for downloading the file. Yes, bingo, it succeeded at this stage finally. 
So again, on the right hand side, as a benchmarker, we can see a conventional cellular network operating in a rural area where there's no social networking involved. And therefore, of course, uh, there's only a, a couple of uh, dark blue dots because only a few of them have succeeded in downloading the contents so far. So I'd like to fast forward now for a moment, almost to the end of the demo, and, and just take a closer look at uh, what the situation is. So on the left hand side, the social network aided system indicates that literally almost all of the mobiles succeeded in downloading uh, the, the contents. Uh, whereas on the right hand side, there's still only a limited fraction of the mobiles. And so this really shows uh, very clearly and explicitly the benefits of uh, social networking. So at this stage, I would stop the demo and I would like to go back uh, and revisit the slides. So just to indicate again at a low pace what was going on in the demo, so remember, left-hand side is the integrated cellular and opportunistic uh, network in a rural area. And so the base station has a relatively limited coverage area of 100 meters. And so at this stage, uh, you can see that uh, mobile user 36 and mobile user 4 are receiving the data corresponding to this uh, light blue color. And perhaps just to indicate here also another scenario, mobile user 26 is a hitherto unserved mobile user waiting for the information of common interest. On the right hand side, again, we have the conventional cellular area, sorry, cellular network rather. And uh, again, mobile station 4 is receiving the information. The base station is activated for transmission. And uh, yeah, ultimately, it's very clear uh, that uh, as we move forward to the next slide, this is a snapshot of the simulation at 3,650 seconds. So in other words, it's roughly an hour, 3,600 seconds would make up a full hour. And uh, again, you would observe here that uh, uh, the majority of the mobile stations have got the desired content, whereas in the conventional cellular network, only a limited fraction, namely 32.5%, of the mobiles received the information. In the integrated mobile social networking aided scenario, 95% of them downloaded it. So my hope is that you found the demo of interest to you. Uh, and I'd like to move on and uh, show you a second scenario in which in contrast to the previously portrayed large-scale opportunistic network, now we consider a small-scale opportunistic network. In other words, a much more densely packed user population than in the previous scenario. So the difference between the previous uh, large-scale and the current small-scale scenario is essentially that owing to the fact that there is a large user density, we have to control the interference. I will not talk about the frame structures here. Suffice to say that we simply use time division multiple access in order to ensure that the uh, coordination of the mobile stations prevents excessive interference. So the first stage of the operation is that the base station broadcasts the information and the four mobile stations here pictured, uh, received the information. Well, eventually only uh, mobile station A receives the information. But now this mobile is in the position to be able to pass it on to B, C and D. And so during the stage two operation, as you can see uh, that uh, mobile station B also received the information. And so there's an ever increasing number of information or content owners who are willing to disseminate the information. Of course, there's a huge variety of issues 
which one has to consider and that are of course discussed in the paper as well, including uh, issues such as how altruistic the mobiles are, etc. So my hope is that you have enjoyed the demo and please uh, read the paper at your leisure and uh, you can also uh, follow up the operation of the system at a low pace demo.